here, Sports Talk Nation. Michael Cohen here with you. And we're going to do a quick recap here of the Jets' 30-10 to loss to the Dallas Cowboys here in Week 2. Uh, really, all things considered, and considering the way the Dallas Cowboys had come into this game, this it, w- it was not going to be surprising to me to see the Jets lose big, considering, one, the way the Cowboys played in Week 1, the way they just absolutely mauled the Giants, and the concerns that a lot of us could see with the Jets, even in that great win, comeback win against Buffalo, the issues they had with the offensive line. And all those issues and then some propped up time and again, over and over again in this ballgame. And I'm going to make a very, (coughs) very blunt statement. Even if the Jets had a healthy Aaron Rodgers... Let's just say a perfect world that Aaron Rodgers was healthy and he and he played in this game. The result probably wouldn't have been much different. It doesn't matter who you have back there. If you cannot pass protect, if you can't run the football on the offensive side, and if you can't slow down your opponent, and that was the case in this game between the Jets and the Cowboys, the Jets on the defensive side, had no answer, none whatsoever, for C.D. Lamb. He, they, Cowboys were moving him all over the field. Sometimes they would match up against Sauce Gardner. The one time where they did match him up against Sauce Gardner, he ha- almost had an interception but dropped it. If he holds on to the ball, there's a chance that turns into a pick six, and it's a different ball game. Instead, he dropped it. Overall, C.D. Lamb, 143 yards on 11 catches. Not a great night for Sauce Gardner. Not a great day for this Jets secondary, and certainly not a, a certainly in a situation where the Jets could not keep pace. As good as this defense has been advertised, could not keep pace with the speed of the Dallas Cowboys. And yes, Tony Pollard only finished with 72 yards rushing for Dallas. When he touched the football, he made plays. In open space, Dak Prescott got rid of the football very quickly. 31 out of 38. He was incredibly accurate in this game for the Dallas Cowboys. 255 yards, passing two touchdowns. The Cowboys have size and they have speed. We saw that in week one against the Giants. And we saw it again here in week two against the New York Jets. And then where the Jets really got hurt was the fact there on the the offensive side for, for Gang Green, they couldn't protect Zach Wilson. They couldn't create any real opportunities for him to step back, sit back, and throw. He was on the run for pretty much the entire night. Dwayne Brown was awful. Dwayne Brown, on a number of plays, and I'm going to bring up the numbers from Micah Parsons, who, if you take a look at the statistics, they don't look that great. Four tackles, yes, two sacks, but... He was always in the Jets' backfield. There was always somebody in the, in the backfield that Zach Wilson had to account for and try to step up quickly and hurry his throws. The Jet offensive line, Dwayne Brown in particular, who just had a terrible game against Micah Parsons, couldn't, couldn't block anybody. So, yes, you want to get on Zach Wilson for throwing three picks in this game, that's fine. You want to do that, that's fine. But the fact is, it's not all his fault. Not when the game is getting carried away. Not when the offensive line can't create lanes for him and create more time for him in the pocket. You can't kill the quarterback on that one. Not to mention, the Jets' running game has been non-existent so far, was non-existent in this game. The leading rusher for the Jets was Zach Wilson. 36 yards on five carries. And that was when he led the Jets towards that field goal drive, toward most of that for that field goal drive just before halftime when the Jets cut it down to 18-10. to 10. Nine yards for Brees Hall, only seven yards for Dalvin Cook. And, yes, I understand that when the game got carried away, the Jets were going to abandon the run. I totally understand that. But the fact is the offensive line didn't do its job in this game. So, to me, it when you put it that way, the Jets could have had a healthy Aaron Rodgers. They could throw Zach Wilson back there as they did. It wouldn't have mattered because it was, still would have been an L considering how poorly this offensive line played for the New York Jets on Sunday afternoon. In fact, I saw a statistic said, that said that Zach Wilson, let me just pull it up here, pressures. I think at one point it was like 69% of the time 
Zach Wilson was under pressure. Micah Parsons, by the way, had seven pressures in the game. Yes, only two sacks, only four tackles. Those are the stats you see in the stat sheet, but seven pressures because he was all, as I said, all over the Jets. So Zach Wilson never had a shot. Never had a shot in this game. Never had an opportunity to sit and throw and have an opportunity to look down the field and make something happen for this football team. When he did have opportunities, he made some nice throws. Passed to Garrett Wilson that turned into a 68-yard catch and run for a touchdown was spectacular. Brought the Jets back in the game at 10-7. And as we all know, the Jets have opportunity very quickly to try to jump in front. We're not for Sauce Gardner dropping what would have been a pick six. And the Cowboys, as a result, turned it around into eight points, taking the 18-7 lead. That was really the backbreaker as far as I was concerned in the, in the football game. So as the Jets sit here at 1-1, one and one, and for all the talk that we have had about the quarterback and what the Jets should do at quarterback now that Aaron Rodgers has lost for the entire season, should they go out there and get a veteran quarterback? Right now, you just keep, the Jets are going to keep rolling with Zach Wilson. Okay, Do I think they're going to bring in another veteran at some point? Yes, probably to back up Zach Wilson, but... It's not going to be someone who's going to overtake him as far as being the starting quarterback is concerned. And as far as as, as as the Jets continue to have these issues trying to pass protect on the offensive line, if Dwayne Brown continues to be a problem at left tackle, which he is, if Lakin Tomlinson continues to be a pr- problem at left guard, as he is, if Mikai Beckton continues to have uneven performances at right tackle, as he is, it won't matter who's under center. So the Jets are going to keep rolling with Zach Wilson as far as I'm concerned. You can't, as I said, you can't pin this entire game on him at all. And defensively, I'm worried about this defense. I really am. Last week they got picked apart a little bit by Josh Allen. I know the Jets held them to thirteen put to 16 points last week, the Buffalo Bills. But Sauce Gardner had a bad game last week. He had a worse game this week. The secondary overall had a worse game this week. They, as I said, they couldn't match up with the speed of the Dallas Cowboys. And there are teams that are coming up in that schedule that are going to have a lot of good speed as well. The Kansas City Chiefs come to mind in a couple of weeks when they come to MetLife Stadium. Teams like the Miami Dolphins, who so far in the early going, you saw it last week in, in against the L.A. Chargers, a team that's going to have a lot of speed. So the, so the Jets have a lot to answer for on both sides of the ball. And right now, none of it has to do with the quarterback, and you have to Go in, you're, they're going into week three against the New England Patriots that, in my mind, I know it's early in the season, is really a must-win situation for them. They need to win that game. It's a division game at home, and the Jets cannot afford to lose to the New England Patriots. If they do, it could be a long down. Uh, it could be a long slump that they're going to be in because they said they have Kansas City after that. Then they have, okay, Denver is a team that they should match up well against, but... That will be a tricky spot. The Eagles are right there as well. Coming up in week six, talk about a team that has a lot of speed. So that is these are these are big, big games and tough opponents the Jets have coming up. And if they're not careful, they could be sunk pretty quickly. Uh, the Giants, man, the Giants were down twenty to nothing. Now I didn't see much of the Giants game, but they were down twenty to nothing to the Arizona Cardinals. Down 28 to 7 to the Arizona Cardinals, came back all the way to win that game 31 to 28. So I have to give a lot of credit to the Giants to come back and win. Uh, but I understand that apparently Saquon Barkley got hurt in the game, left the game with an apparent leg injury, and uh, he is now very much, I would have to imagine, probably doubtful for Thursday night against the 49ers. But the Giants, yeah, it was a win, but one that could end up being costly because that was a tough matchup they're going to have on Thursday against San Francisco, probably the best team in the league right now, next to Dallas. Um, yeah, that's going to be a rough spot for the Giants. They could, they're lucky they're not going into that 0-2 right now. Very fortunate they're not going into 0-2. Uh, so the state of football in the New York Tri-State area, not great. Not great at all after Week 2. Jets losing to, again to the Dallas Cowboys, 30-10, to a game that showed us a lot of warts for the Jets, as I said, on both sides of the ball. Leave your thoughts below. We'll discuss it. We'll apply a little bit of a panel later on this week. Also, coming up this week, a lot going on this week. In fact, we got the Somerset Patriots in the playoffs against the Bingham Toronto Ponies. Probably be down there at some point at the end of the week. And we got to do something on the Mets. We got to do something on the Mets. We haven't done something on the Mets in a long time with David Stearns now taking over as the president of baseball operations. What should we expect, if anything? 
What should your expectations be? Seems like kind of a muted response by Mets fans so far. Talk about that later in the week as well. Again, like and subscribe right here to the Sports Talk Nation.